Today I want to do a super quick and dirty tutorial on how to design a spinner for combat robotics. This is going to be very straightforward, it's not going to go into any of the theory behind it, it is simply going to show you what you need to do in order to sketch and balance a blade for your combat robot. So first thing you want to do is open up your CAD of choice, create a sketch, and then look at top down view. Now the first thing you should do is make sure that this is centered on your origin. It'll just make everything in the future a bit simpler. Then you want to create a circle and this first circle is going to be our outer diameter. We're going to use a very arbitrary value here because I want this to be applicable for anything from fairy weights all the way to heavyweights. So there's a couple really key values that define every single blade. First thing is going to be our outer diameter. The second one is going to be our counterweight. We're going to want to have some kind of offset between the actual striking tooth and the counterweight, because typically you want to hit them with the tooth, you don't want to hit them with the counterweight. Pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to set this to a arbitrary value of 10. Now this will vary according to your weight class, but in general you want to have something roughly in these proportions. Now the next thing that we want to do is create our rake angle. So in order to do that, we're going to create one line, and this is going to be another construction line. And then we're going to create a second line, and this is the first part of our actual blade. So in order to determine our rake angle, this is how we define it. Typically, I'd recommend a rake angle of 15%. It is not too aggressive, but it also won't immediately blunt. Next, we'd want our blade to not immediately dull. So in order to do that, we want a little bit of distance between our between the tip of our tooth. This adds a bit of support so that when we hit someone, it doesn't immediately bend, it doesn't immediately flatten out. Now we have this, we're going to create an arc, and this will be the backside of our tooth. We want to go here, and we want to make these tangent with each other. As you can see, this is not properly constrained yet. So we take our center point of our arc, and set it to the center point of the entire weapon. So now we have a bit of meat behind this tooth. Now, depending on your weight class, this is going to change by a bit, but let's say three millimeters roughly for a beetle weight. This is going to be, once again, a very vague approximation, but it's the proportions that matter here, not the actual numbers. So now we have the back of our tooth, and we want to create the rest of our blade. We're going to go for a vaguely triangular shape. Now to do that, we're going to take one line and we're going to go to one side of our counterweight circle and then create another line to the other side. We'll probably want this to be tangent because in general, we want smooth transfers from one area to another. So now in order to actually finish off this blade shape, we create one more tangent and there we go. We now have the rough outline of a blade. We'll want to have a bore in order to actually support this weapon and stick it onto our weapon shaft. And now this is the very, very basic shape you can start off with. So the next thing that we want to do is actually give our blade some substance. So we're going to extrude, we're going to select our plane, and we're going to go up. So now we have the actual body of our blade. Next thing that we want to do is go to center of mass and figure out whereabouts the balancing point of our blade is. So as you can see, it's down here. What that means is that there is more mass in this area than there is in the top area. So in order to do this and in order to actually balance this out, we're going to have to do a couple tricks. First thing that we want to do, however, is add a fillet to our tooth. Otherwise, we're going to end up with it snapping over here. So once we put something here that looks roughly right, we can see where our actual center of mass is. The trick to balancing this blade now is to actually drag things around until we get this, this center of mass over to where we want it to be. So because it was back down here, we're going to want to move a bit of mass over here. Once we finish the sketch, we can see we're getting a bit closer. However, there is too much mass towards this counterweight. Now, there are a couple ways of solving this. One that we could do is we can increase the counterweight offset of our blade. If I were to increase this to 15, you see we shrink this in. I'm going to quickly 
redefine this so that we're actually concentric to our circle. And if we close out, we can see that we have now pushed it up slightly. However, there's better ways of doing this because if we are set on our counterweights offset, we're actually losing a lot of mass by getting rid of the um, out of getting rid of the material along the edge. So instead, what we'll do is we're going to add a bit of a pocket. So we're going to do something very, very rough here. And you, I hope, will end up with a blade much prettier than this. But I'm doing this fairly quickly in order to show you the approximate steps. We're then going to edit our extrude because we're observing good CAD practices and limiting the amount of features. And now you can see we're actually a lot closer. However, this looks awful. So we're going to create a couple pockets, sorry, a couple fillets and add this. And we can see our counterweight is now slightly closer to where we want it to be. In order to lower the amount of drag on our blade, we can fill at these corners. In general, everything but this right here should be filleted keeps the stress rises down. So now we're closer. We're here and we want to be there. However, this doesn't need to be perfect. If you're getting this cut at a place like Send Cut Send, which is a 2D laser cutting service, there is going to be some inherent inaccuracy in the laser cutting process. So as long as you get it within roughly one millimeter or whatever the imperial equivalent is, you will be fine. So the next thing we want to do, again, is move this just slightly further in. So we're going to move this up, hit sketch. So now we can see we're slowly lining this up from top to bottom. So the next thing that we could do is simply remove a bit more mass from the bottom. So we're going to go back to our sketch. We're going to pull this out a bit more. Um, please, for my own sake, make this a bit more beautiful when you're doing this but the, the general gist should be there. And as you can see, we're actually now pretty close. So we're only a bit up and right, which means that we need to add a bit more weight down here. So we can go here, do that. We're getting closer, we overshot slightly. We pull this slightly further away. And now we are getting very, very close, probably within the tolerance of the laser cutting service. And now you have a blade. So you might want to vary this a bit depending on your use case. This is a very standard blade and the goal of this video was just to give you a very quick and dirty way to actually get your blade started. So hope this helps. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's any, any questions you might have. And thank you for watching.